Scalia, the Illuminati, the Jesuits, and the Vatican. By Catherine Frisk. Opus Dei influences rises to the top of the Vatican. By Betty Claremont is a long, informative article that connects many dots and is worth bookmarking for the future references. What's important throughout is the overriding theme of the suppression of the exposure of the international pedophile network and the Roman Catholic priests involved, or coupled with misogynist aversion to the equal rights of women. The list includes support for all right-wing corporate fascist political parties and governments, the connection of the Illuminati, which founded by the Jesuit John Adam Wellship, which leads to us to Judge Scalia, Justice Joseph Scalia, and Bohemian Grove, and child sex abuse in the heart of the Vatican itself, and what is more, the Mockingbird Murdoch media propaganda machine. Thrown into the mix to the prospect of World War III and the Christian Zionists who are literally hell-bent on destroying the oldest Orthodox Christian communities in the Middle East. Hence, we have their de facto CIA mercenaries and the Knights of Malta supporting ISIS and Iraq, Syria, and the Orthodox Christian Church in Eastern Europe and Russia terrorized by a com combination of Ukrainian Nazis founded by the Jewish Zionists and supported by Muslim Brotherhood insurgents to wipe them off the face at Earth. Scalia Funeral. Here are some key points, keeping in mind that the Vatican is the biggest pedophile of all boys club on the planet, that the Illuminati was founded by a Jesuit, and that the P2 Lodge is one of the most powerful Illuminati lodges in the Mafia control. One, their goal is the same as other plutocrats, unbridled power, except they use their influence of the Catholic Church and its worldwide network of institutions exempt from both taxes and financial reporting requirements to advance right-wing parties and governments. This explains the nun, the Jesuit from Poland, and Clive Derby Lewis, who killed Chris Hannay, a favourite of Nelson Mandela, who wanted Hannay to succeed him. The list of names that the nun gave to Derby Lewis also includes Mandela to be assass assassinated. It all goes by a long way explaining Robert Mugabe, a Jesuit with close ties to the Vatican and all right-wing dictators in South America, Argentina being first and foremost as Jesuit Pope Francis comes from that country. It has also posed a huge question mark over the head of Julius Malama and his Red Berets, who have close ties with Robert Mugabe, and Zeno PF, who is really praying for and steering his controversial anti-ANC stand. If you don't know who Mugabe is, he's the one that killed millions of people in um, Rwanda. The Roach is a Jesuit with close ties to the South African National Apartheid Government, who, with the Roman Catholic Church and their worldwide intelligence, helped the apartheid regime track down Mandela, put him in jail for 25 years. La Roach's father was a Jesuit who infiltrated the Quakers until they found him out and threw him out. He had his hand at every white-wing dictatorship in South America and Africa, where he'd been a major influence to Roger, Robert Mugabe. King William Alexander of Netherlands is married to Maxima Zog a Korean and born in Argentina to George and who was the agricultural minister under a fascist dictator, General Valdita. At the same time, Pope Francis was bishop. William Alexander is the grandson of Prince Bernhardt, who was an as fascist supporter and the founder of the Bilderberg Group. He was also a supporter of the apartheid nationalist regime, and today a Nobel Peace Prize winner of William de, de Klerk Libs on a very lucrative farm in Argentina, along with his fascist friends. In 2016, Cardinal Wilfred Fox Napier of Durban, South Africa, was appointed by Pope Francis as a cardinal member of the newly established Council of Economic Affairs. He participated in the cardinal conclave that elected both Ratzinger, known as known Nazi sympathiser with links to child sexual abuse in the papal conclave, that elected Bor Borgello who had a cloud hanging over his head for the presumed support of the fascist regime in Argentina. Also of concern along that is Del Nero of Houston and Norberto Rivina Carraro of Mexico, as with so many of the Pope's other appointments, three of the cardinals have words and deeds regarding clergy, sex crimes and cover-ups, which are deeply troubling. Two Supernuries are married and live independently, but are still required to make large contributions and send their children to Opus Day schools if available. All levels, the names of lay members are secret and less self-disclosed. Opus Day also has an order of publicly identified priests and prelates. These are men in government, the military, law courts, with people like Scalia and banking. The newly named administration of the Paramount 
patrimony of the Apostle C, which replaces the Institute for Religious Works, was overseen and took advice from none other than Peter Sutherland of Goldwyn and Sachs, a long-time consultant of the Vatican. Keep that Keep in mind that it was Goldman Sachs that played a major role in the economic meltdown in Greece, a predominantly orthodox Christian country which should raise eyebrows. 3. Robert Hutchison, a Canadian financial journalist, traces the growth of Opus Dei financial power by all available means, deception, dirty tricks and even physical muscle-like poisonings which mimic heart attacks. So many heart attacks you start to lose count. Scalia died from a heart attack, as have many others who have been a problem. It's widely known that Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia, Samuel Alto, and Clarence Thomas belong to Opus Dei, and that Chief Justice John Roberts may also be a member, stated Matthew Fox, former priest, progressive theologian, and author of more than 23 books. And there you have it. Scalia was Opus Dei, but there's more. These organizations will support whatever Republican Republican candidate has the best chance of winning regardless of his religious affiliation. That's why the endorsement of five former U.S. ambassadors, US ambassadors to the Vatican of Mitt Romney in early January, January 2012, before the primaries sealed that big money had already chosen the GOP presidential nominee. Well, look, now we have here old friend Mr. Just Too Weird Romney. This also explains Ronald Reagan and one of the other major changes he made whilst in office and which went along the Founding Fathers' resolution to not allow a papal embassy due to their policy of separation between church and state. In 1984, Reagan gave the Vatican permission for ambassador, whereas formerly they were only represented by a postate delegate. And to think about that last year, the Pope addressing the US Congress for the first time, and a Jesuit Pope of that, this contrary event, supported none other by Joe Biden and Joe Bone. Bonia, who wept tears of triumph as did Marco Rubio. Mission accomplished, considering that the Pope misguidedly believes that he owns the planet, all bodies on the planet and souls. Did the USA think for one minute that they are any different? 6. The US Catholics are roughly 22-24% to 24 of the population. Latest poll conducted in February 2014 by the Public Region Research Institute showed that the percentage of Catholics who are non-Hispanic white is down to 60%. Solution, open the borders and let the floodgate of Hispanic Roman Catholics into the country and level the playing fields. On the 18th of February 2016, Pope Francis accused Donald Trump of not being a Christian because of his policies towards immigrants. My personal opinion on this subject, and it applies to all countries, religion aside, is that any country that is in debt to the tune of trillions has high levels of unemployment and homeless people should take care of its own backyard before inviting the starving unemployed from other countries. Once your own people have a roof over their heads and gainfully employed and are able to support themselves without depleting the coffers even furthermore by most social security, then you can gladly open the doors to others less fortunate. Ask neglected veterans. Ask the people living in Chicago. I have a friend who has lost his job because Whirlpool has had a worker from Mexico worker had worked for move to Mexico where the wages were cheaper. So the jobs have been sent to Mexico and now the U.S. must take in more across from the border. Am I missing something here? Perhaps Pope Francis should have been more specific that Donald Trump is not a Roman Catholic. Trump values show a concern for American Christians, the large majority of whom are, were not Roman Catholics. And it gets better. 7. Days before Pope Borgello, sorry for saying that wrong, appointed Pell on the 13th of April 2013 to his G8 group of cardinals who would advise the Pope on governing the church. Pell attended a gala dinner celebrating the Melbourne-based Institute of Public Affairs in an ultra-conservative think tank. Rupert Murdoch was a guest of honour and Abbott the keynote speaker. Murdoch was awarded a papal knighthood by Pope John Paul II for promoting interests of society, the church and the holy see. So Mockingbird Media, Murdoch Media is sanctioned by the Vatican and Murdoch has knighthood, no less for propaganda and disinformation. What is more, as of the 29th of February 2016, his pal, George Pell, is being called to give evidence about the time in Ballarat and Melbourne Diocese. During this time there, several pedophile priests were operating, including St. Elperus School in Ballarat, where children were subject to abuse from Gerald Wright's Ridsell, Australia's most prolific pedophile who described himself as out of control at the hearing last year. Seems to me this merry bunch of men have been out of control for over a thousand years, but it gets worse. That, If that is all possible, 
this is one of those green moments where you need to barf bag and mumble to the person closest to you. Can you please pass the paper packet? But for the good news, first the good news. From March 1st, 2016, U.S. bishops hit six sex abuse of hundreds of children in U.S. court. The U.S. Catholic Church is already facing severe financial difficulties over settlement payments to victims and other costs totaling around $3 billion, forcing itself to sell off assets and cost, cut costs. A dozen dioceses have filed for bankruptcy in the face of exclusive sense of lawsuits claiming that they did not have the resources to pay them. If they close shop and ship out back to the hive of Rome, this is good news for American. Here is the part that makes you want to vomit. A payout check. Two Roman Catholic bishops at the helm of, child, helm of the church in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania have helped cover up the sexual abuse of hundreds of children molested by some 50 priests over a span of four decades, an official report says. The report says Adamek had created a payout chart to help guide how much victims would receive from the church in return for their sexual services. Based on the chart, between 10000 and 25000 would be paid to victims fondled over their clothes, between 15000 to 40000 to those fondled under their clothes or subjected to masturbation, from 25000 to 75000 to those subjected to forced oral sex, and between 50000 to 175000 to those subject to forced sodomy or intercourse. Cain further noted that none of the criminal acts detailed in the report can be prosecuted because alleged abusers have died. The victims are too traumatized to testify and the statute of limitations on prosecuting cases has expired. The Optus Day influences rises to the top of the Vatican, answers so many questions and connections and so many dots that it's mind blowing. He's a brief expert extract, but there's so much more to explore. Opus Day official institution of the Catholic Church at the top of the secret society of international bankers, financial finances, businesses, and the supporters. Their goal is the same as the other plutocrats, unbridled power, except that they use their influence in the Catholic Church and his worldwide network of institutions exempt from both paying taxes and financial reporting statements required to advance right-wing parties. A year after Cardinal George Mario Borgello elevation as head of the church and his many appointments, the dust had settled. Three cardinals have emerged as the most powerful in this papacy and all have close ties to Opus Dei. Two now control all Vatican finance. Still the most exhaustively researched book written about the work as it's referred to by its members, Their Kingdom Come, 97-2006 by Robert Hutchison. Canadian financial journalist traces down the growth of Optus Dei financial power by all available means. Deception, dirty tricks and even physical muscle, like poisoning which mimics heart attacks. What gives Opus Dei its importance is its influence it wields and also that it deploys its immense financial resources. Optus Dei knows very well that the money rules the world. Javier Sanz Moreno, professor at the Law of Madrid University, told Hutchison one of their goals was to control the Vatican's wealth, now closer than ever to being realized. Like many religious cults, the members at the bottom are sincere believers that Opus Dei is the path to personal holiness. Many are numeries. Men and women vow to celebrate see who live in communal residence and hand over their earnings to the organization. This creates workers totally dedicated to their assigned task and assures a steady stream of re revenue and makes it difficult for members to live. Supernumeries are married and live independently but are still required to make large contributions and send their children to Opus Dei schools is available at all levels. The names of the lay members are secret and less self-disclosed. Opus Dei has an order of publicly identified priests and prelates. Opus Dei's only charity is founding schools, business schools, student centres at the world's leading universities to train and recruit a continuous supply of professionals dedicated to the Opus Dei Catholic Golds. Opus Dei is significantly connected to the 479 universities and high schools. I wonder if that's the same as the 479 visas that Australia has too. I'll look into that. According to journalist Michael Welsh, based on confidential reports submitted to the Vatican in 1979, Opus Dei's flagship universities in Navarre, Spain, is a graduate business school, IS. IESE, founded in 1958, has growing alliances in key areas such as Latin America, Chile, Middle East and Europe, campuses in Barcelona, Madrid and New York City, and teaching facilities in Munich and St. Paul. According to a 2012 report in The Economist, they also operate a global network of MBA schools per Bloomberg. 
probably Opus Dei's largest financial institution is Bene Banco Central. Sorry, I, I butcher these wrong. Sorry. The largest bank in the Eurozone by market value and one of the largest banks in the world in terms of market capitalization. Stanta funds Opus Dei schools. Stanta's interest in highly educated Education is in deep interest long term because we understand that the universities are studying the leaders who will run the country in the future, explained a company official. Opus Dei pursues the Vatican's agenda through the presence of its members in secular governments and institutions and through a vast array of academic, medical and grassroots pursuits. It contrasts efforts to increase presence in civil institutions of power in support of growth in the organisation as a whole. The work in the public sphere breaches the church-state division that is fundamental to modern democracy, wrote Gordon Urquhart, the author of Pope's Amina, Unlocking the Secret Mysteries of the Powerful New Sex in the Church, 1995. It is widely known that the Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia and Samuel Alto and Clarence Thomas belong to Opus Dei, and that Chief Justice John Roberts may also be a member, stated Matthew Fox, a former priest, progressive theologian, and author of more than 23 books. They are in the CIA, the FBI, said Fox. Daniel Ellsberg recently told me that some of their ranking commanders are our military, also Opus Dei, Fox stated in another interview. Veteran investigative reporter Seymour Hirsch made similar observation. Hirsch stated that General Stanley McChrystal, Vice Admiral William McRaven and others in the Joint Special Operations Command, the group responsible for the assassination of Osama bin Laden, were members of the Knights of Malta and Op Opus Dei. They see themselves as protecting Christians from the Muslims. And this is their function, Hirsch added, that the members of these secret societies have developed a secret set in signers that represent the whole notion that this culture war between religions. New York Times noted in 2012 that Opus Dei Boy Prep School has become the popular school for a small creek of Washington's Rick Santrum, lobbyist and former U.S. Senator, RFFL, Mel Martini's sec Secretary of Defense, Chuck Heigel, the infamous FBI spy, and Opus Opus Dei member Robert Hansen's boss, former FBI director Louis J. French, non-founder Maggie Galliner, and National Review editor Kate O'Burney. Fox said that both Sanatorium and New Grinch are members, but that doesn't guarantee Opus Dei Catholic Church banking. These organizations will spill support whichever Republican candidate has the best chance of winning, regardless of his religious affiliation. That's why the endorsement by five former U.S. ambassadors to the Vatican of Mitt Romney in early January 2012 